know, this is your third win. You've tied Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon now for the most all-star wins. Talk about what that means. Man, it, it, uh, it, it means a ton to me. Um, you know, those are two of the greatest drivers that have ever been in a, a stock car. And, um, you know, I, I want to set my goals high, and I want to be considered one of the best to sit in a stock car. And the only way you do that is by winning big races and piling up those stats. So I'm uh, very happy to have won tonight. Um, you know, I, I just can't say enough about our team and the growth within our team, the confidence that we all have in one another, the bond that is growing uh, between every member of the team. And all of that carries into uh, what we do on race day and, and how that car performs on the track. And within two corners tonight, uh, as I was on the outside, which is usually, you know, the place you don't want to be, um, I, I just, I knew it was on. And uh, I was able to, to get to the lead in that first segment and really set our night uh, in the right direction and, and kind of control the night. I mean, we, everybody knew that if you could win that first segment, you could control the night. And uh, we were able to do that starting six, so it was pretty, pretty awesome. Thank you, Jimmy. Chad, uh, winning that pit crew challenge Thursday night, I think played a role in that win here tonight. Uh, talk about maybe that. Talk about how the team performed uh, in all-star condition. Yeah, I, I'm so proud of uh, the, the Lowe's 48 pit crew. Uh, last year, we made a pretty big transition to a pretty young group of guys and some guys that came from another team or two and uh, put these guys together. And I haven't seen a group of guys that have worked so hard to have good, solid pit stops in my life. And these guys are just fantastic. And we knew we had a meeting after we were able to win at Darlington last week. And we said, look, if we can go out and we can win the pit crew challenge and get that number one pit box, and we can get a solid race car and go out there and win the first segment. The rest of it would be up to Jimmy. We knew that we could win the race. And uh, man, it just it played out perfectly. Those guys did such a fantastic job at the Ulster, or the pit crew challenge on Thursday night. Beat the defending champions. I think uh, not only once but twice. I think that speaks volumes about how good those guys are. And uh, Jimmy drove a heck of a race this weekend. Uh, in practice, the car was 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 fair, solid, and uh, he did a really good job of directing us and what we needed to do with the race car and. And came in today, and it was it was great. Exactly what we needed to do. Uh, I was stressing last night as to what we were going to do for strategy, and I actually made him come to the transporter, and we talked about it again, and so on and so forth. And he was like, "Man, strategy is pretty easy now after you win that first segment," which it was. So uh, <laughs> that's exactly what he said. How do you like me now? And I was like, "Man, I love you, buddy, because you made my night easy." So uh, it worked out really great, and uh, I couldn't be prouder to be able to get that third all-star race here. That's uh, that's pretty cool. That's a lot of fun. Thank you, Chad and Rick. Certainly, what a uh, seven days it's been for uh, you and your racing organization. And you took a little, a little spin out there in the 48 car, and then the uh, post win. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. But talk about that, <laughs> and I'll also talk about just you know the significance of your seventh All Star win as a t as a team owner, and and uh, you know just how things are really starting to kind of line up now as you get, get in that time of the season where you really start kind of going for the championship? Well, that, that was the dumbest thing I've done <laughs> ever in racing tonight. That was it. That was – I, I may have done some smart things, but that was the dumbest one. But it, I don't know. We just were so excited, and I saw Jimmy, and, and uh, when I climbed in, I got my foot hung in the dash and had his <laughs> – knee pin where he couldn't get to the clutch and I thought I'm going to be like a busted watermelon out here but it was it was a it was a it was a neat deal and I but you did say come get me yeah so I, d I did what you said I'll, I'll kind of yeah I don't, I don't even I don't like I said it's the dumbest thing we've ever done but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know I said early this year that this I thought we had great momentum in our organization and 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 you know Jimmy's had a just a, a, a really good year, but we had a rough start. And to see Dale win the Open and then win a segment, and I thought Casey had won a segment. And um, so all the cars are running well, And uh, but I'm just proud of these guys. And that that, that pit crew, uh, that young, young crowd is just pumped, and I think the guys are working together. Uh, it's just uh, – it's, it, it just feels terrific. And, you know, after you win the 200, that was a kind of a monkey on our back for a while. And then get the pit crew deal done. And then uh, then come in here tonight and, and, and run this well. I'm just uh, excited about the 600, excited about the rest of the year, and uh, proud of a little chase, too. So uh, everything's been clicking for us here lately.
All right, we'll take some questions. We'll go Jenna, David, then we're going to go to Joe, and then we're going to press box. But I will come back down. Jenna, Joe, David, go ahead. Jennifer, I, I, I think we all get why you rode around in the back. But, um, Chad, I guess if you can just describe t for us why that was the strategy. And Jimmy, as a racer, if what's that like to go, I guess it was 60 laps, and, and not be trying that hard or at all? No, I, we were trying. We were working on our car. Um, you know, I, I would make sure that uh, you know, I could get a couple good laps in and, and find the balance of the car. And we we're in heavy conversation about small adjustments and what we could do uh, preparing for that final segment. So, you know, once we get through that and I'd catch the back, it, it was time to ride. And, uh, you know, that's no fun. My mind's running. You know, it's a track changing. Uh, these guys are racing. Are they getting better? Are they stronger? But uh, I had to believe in the system, and I, and I really think whoever won that first segment would have done the same thing. Um, it's it's just what you do when you ha when you can control the race like that, and uh, we, we took great advantage of it. Yeah, I mean he hit it right on the head. Uh, what the, the biggest thing you've got to do in, in any event is you've got to limit your ri your risk, and and that's what we needed to do. Um, we were fortunate, like Jimmy said, that he was able to get out there that first segment and attack and and get the win, and from that point on, all you want to do is just maintain and make sure you're there at the end, uh, and that's what we wanted to do. We took the opportunity to, like Jimmy said, make some adjustments to the race car. We made some adjustments. He didn't think that they were correct uh, or didn't help the car where he needed it, so we came back down pit road. We undid those, made some others. He went back out. He felt like it was a little bit better. We adjusted on it another time, and uh, <coughs> he felt like that we were getting pretty close. So uh, we even though it looked like we were just coasting back there, he was pushing it pretty hard. And there were a couple couple runs there where we were quite a bit faster than leaders. So it uh, it did exactly what we needed it to do. And I think it made a great show for the fans. It it, it, it mixed it up towards the front. You had some guys with on, uh, a lot of different strategies, which I thought was very exciting. You saw some people stay out. You saw some people get four tires, two tires. Almondinger drove up there on four tires. Um, you saw guys stay out on old tires. I, I thought it was great. It was really exciting to watch. And I think it was a great show. It was a lot of fun to, to see all that come to fruition. Joe Menzer and then David and then Press Box. Go ahead, Joe. Back to the back. Joe Menzer, NASCAR.com. Uh, Jimmy, uh, 200 twin. Uh, you know, you uh, passed Rusty Wallace. You've been on the all-time wins list there. You, you Now you are uh, win your third all-star race, and you're mixing up. Uh, you're up top with uh, Dale Earnhardt and uh, – and Gordon, you gave uh, Rick his first window ride. I mean, <laughs> what, you know, is some of this, I mean, do you think much about this stuff? And Rick, could you also speak to all the stuff that, you know, he's just continues to accomplish? Uh, you know, this week, I, I've probably thought about things more than uh, the most weeks. You know, I to, to give Rick his 200th win and to uh, look at the company, and you know, I can go back to when I was, racing off-road trucks and watching from afar and didn't know how I was going to get into NASCAR, but it's where I wanted to be. Um, I'd come to races and I'd watch the Hendrick guys walk by. I'd walk, watch Rick walk by. Uh, that's back when Randy Dorton had that cool hairdo where you could see where the comb went right through it. <laughs> Some of you might remember that. Like, who's he? He's, he's pretty important to have a haircut and hairstyle, you know? Um, so I, uh, I watched from afar and I just wanted to be a part of this team so bad. And uh, to be here and to be a part of it and to contribute, um, to have a, a group of guys like I do in our 4888 shop, uh, and really the entire complex, um, it's family. I've been there for so many years now that uh, I have great pride in, in uh, the contributions I've made. Um, when I see that Hendrick logo, um, I know what it means to me and the family and wh what we all are together. So this last week's been really special. 